Trini, thank you very much for being here today. We just had a great conversation about uh, capital flow and opportunity in India here. And I want to start, before we go there, I want to ask you to talk a little bit more about Kotak, what you guys do here in India. Big company, very busy. Uh, can you tell us more about your current challenges? Sure. Uh, we are an alternative asset manager, Kotak Alternative Asset Managers. We actually started with just one asset class, real estate, back in 2005, 2006. Uh, we are now in Fund 13 in real estate. In addition to that, we manage other pools of capital for private credit, uh, infrastructure, data centers, uh, and uh, corporate mid-market credit as well. In aggregate, we manage about close to $9 billion of assets in India. Most of our capital is global institutional capital, but we are increasingly tapping the uh, domestic market, which has now come of age in terms of capital flows. So the conversation on capital flows was quite timely. Very interesting. How do you see the global scenario with Russia, Ukraine, the conflict in the Middle East, US and Europe going through some crisis, China with big question marks? Is that helping India to attract foreign investors or is that not, not being uh, uh, felt here as something positive? I think uh, the world has become obviously more complicated. Uh, for a reasonable period of time, we had a unipolar world that got challenged by China. And uh, now with all the conflicts that you just mentioned, uh, it, it has obviously impacted uh, people's perception of risk and uh, people's perception of uh, the tenure of investment that they may want to do anywhere in the world. And India is no exception to that. Particularly with regard to the conflicts in Ukraine as well as in the Middle East, India is, India is a net energy importer. We import 85% of our energy requirements. So if oil prices go up, it's bad news for India. Yeah. If oil prices go down, it's good news for India. So while in the present crisis, uh, despite some increase in oil prices, India has had a long-standing relationship with Russia, and therefore we've been able to get oil at a reasonable price. I think as a country, we are okay from an inflation point of view, so long as oil is $100 or below. Beyond that, it's trouble for us, fiscal deficit, and therefore impact on interest rate affects us. Uh, in terms of capital flows, uh, while India is in a sweet spot right now, we continue to grow at about 6.5% GDP. Residential asset class is doing really well, they are both in terms of volume growth as well as in price. Uh, office, there is net increase in absorption uh, compared to the rest of the world, so India is going the other way. Uh, so is uh, logistics and data centers. So pretty practically all the major real estate asset classes uh, are in positive territory uh, as opposed to the rest of the world. But what that does to capital flows is that global investors who obviously had a far lesser exposure to India and had far greater exposure to other parts of the world are seeing uh, values dropping in other parts of the world. And consequently that impacts their uh, decision making so if I go to an investor, global investor today and say, look, India is an exception uh, in the office market, you should look at it. I don't think they are the time of the day right now. But there will come a time when things will settle down and the attractiveness of India will be back on the radar of investors. When you look at the market, is there any specific opportunity as the best opportunity? Is that related to a specific asset class, location? Where is the best opportunity you see? I think at a broader level, I would say the reason India for us as fund managers is attractive is because there is no capital availability. The lack of capital availability, particularly for real estate, because A, the central bank does not permit the banks to lend to real estate at land acquisition stage. Secondly, uh, we had this animal called non-bank finance company, which we were providing slightly more risk capital for real estate. The largest non-bank lender to real estate got merged into a bank. Mm. So that has created another vacuum in the market. So as a consequence, the availability of capital uh, for real estate at the risk end of the spectrum, which is land acquisition risk, permitting risk, and construction risk, is just not there. So those who have the ability to control that risk and understand the counterparties and execution risk have a field day in terms of being able to put capital to work. 
-hmm. So that's one spectrum. The other spectrum was the global investors who are buying stabilized assets because they did not want to take the you know, development risk. But in stabilized assets, the, you know, the negative sentiment of the rest of the world, which is where the majority of the portfolio is, is impacting cap rates and therefore cap rates have started going up. Because not much of global capital is coming in to buy mm -hmm. stabilized assets. So if I had domestic capital, I'm now finding, or I do hope to find in the next 12 to 18 months, Stabilized assets at better cap rates, mm -hmm. and because there's no capital for development, I'm able to put capital out at very attractive returns at development. So it's a sweet spot. Interesting, very interesting point. Now let's go to the other side of the the conversation. Is there anything that uh, keeps you awake at night? I think I do wor worry about how geopolitics is going to play out, and. Uh, it can, uh, if things go out of hand and oil goes out of hand, then as a country we will have serious problems with regard to inflation. I think that's something that uh, worries me. Of course, there is this big risk of India facing an election in, in 2014, and one hopes that we will get a stable government uh, after the election. Part of the reason why we have done very well in the last decade is that we've had two successive stable governments, uh, and India had suffered the consequences of what we call as coalition government for nearly 25 years. Mm. And you know, with the pulls and pressures of a coalition government, policy making always becomes challenging. Perfect. Srini, thank you very much. Very good speaking to you. Very thank insightful. Thank you. Pleasure.